What's up guys? Hope you all are doing well. Today I am with my buddy Rob Jones. How are we doing buddy? Good man. Awesome, awesome. So Rob is a Marine Corps veteran and a Purple Heart recipient and uh, a double amputee. Yep, double above knee. Yeah, I mean, incredible story. If you have not checked out the podcast with Rob, please do so. We had an incredible talk on that, but uh, we are in the gym now. Yep. And one of your favorite things to do was to train and lift weights. Yeah, I mean, getting ready for going on deployment. You had to be in great shape, and so just wanted to do that, but then I kind of fell in love with just being in shape and working out, and so uh, one of the things I wanted to be able to get back after my injury was being able to work out in the gym uh, like I did before, and it was just sort of a lot of experiment and figuring out what I could do and what I needed to to create or invent in order to do it. So Absolutely. So we're going to run through some things today, and we're going to start with some deadlifting. So deadlift was one of your favorite things to do yeah. uh, before you got hurt, and um, you know it's, it sounds like you had to get a little creative with how to come back to doing deadlift. Yeah, I mean, um, I was big into deadlifting before, and it's one of my favorite lifts still. Okay. And the part, one of the things about not having knees is that like bending forward is really hard um, in order to, so like when you bend forward, you kind of bend your knees and you hinge at the hip. Totally, I open and then, my knees So I can't up. Yeah. bend the knees, so it's really just hinging at the hip, but then the more weight I put forward, the more I have to shoot my hips back and it just becomes sort of really unstable. Makes so sense. So it can't really go down to the, the floor um, and have any leverage. Okay. It's so like once I get to a certain point, I kind of have to go down to the floor and then I have to push myself back up. To get back up. So it's up. really hard to, in a deadlift, you, you have to be able to have leverage throughout the entire thing. So, so how, how did, you, did I how figure did that out? So, um, how to do deadlift? My physical therapist, when she was first teaching me how to walk, they would put belts around our waist. Okay. And then so, and then they would hold on to the belt from ba from behind, just in case we fell down. They would be able to kind of keep us from falling. Interesting. And so I thought, what if I just had her hold that belt one day, and then I tried to go down to the floor and come back up and see if I could do it in a controlled manner. Okay. And she did it, and I went kind of went down to the floor and came back up in a controlled manner. And then, so I was like, well, okay, let me see if I can do it while I'm holding like a 25 pound dumbbell. So I did it. And she said, you know, uh, and I was like, yeah, that works. And so then I just started experimenting with how I could get heavier and heavier because, you know, nobody wants to deadlift 25 pounds. Sure. You want to deadlift a thousand pounds. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so I started, sh and she wasn't going to be able to hold me if I did like a hundred pounds. So I started strapping myself into like this pole that we had in the clinic. Okay. And I was able to do heavier and heavier weights until, you know, when I was doing rowing, uh, I would strap myself into um, a squat rack that had a bunch of weights on it and I would do heavy weights. Like I was able to get up to 300 pounds was my, the highest I ever Which reached. And it's a basically incredible. just a, a straight leg deadlift. That's amazing, man. So what, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to replicate that today and use the power rack mm -hmm. and basically put a, uh, a belt that's going to strap us in to the power rack. And I'm going to try to essentially copy Rob's workout and see if, you know, how it feels for me and how I'm able to adapt to it. So, you know, this is, um, it's pretty incredible, man. You know, what you've been through in your journey, but uh, let's see what we can do here and, and how it feels. All right. So yeah, the first thing, find a really heavy vertical object. Something, yeah. Preferably bolted to the ground or super heavy because I've pulled over squat racks before. And then I just strap myself in. I usually, at home, I use a boat strap, which is really thin. Okay. Um, so is this too thick or? No, this is good. Okay. I actually prefer thicker because the boat strap, when I put heavy weights on it, kind of like cuts, cuts into me. Makes yeah. sense. And so I just strap myself in kind of tight. And I usually go with a little bit of a wider stance. Okay. Because um, it's a little bit more stable. Makes sense. And then I pretty much just hinge at the hips and get into, you know, my normal deadlift grip. Okay. And I just stand up oh, like that's that. Awesome. And that's awesome. Yeah. And I just, you know, go for reps. I'll do 10. How's that sound? No, it sounds good. And I, you know, I do my best to try and keep up, you know, a straight back. So your back, your back is very straight there. Yeah. And locked in. So you're still trying to do the same thing with a deadlift where you're, you're engaging the lats and trying to stay tight there. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to do the same exact thing. That's eight. 
Yeah. And then right now I can feel it in my hamstrings. Interesting. Okay. Um, and I think, I don't know exactly why that is because my hamstrings are pretty atrophied. I don't really have much hamstring. And I think it's because it's sort of like a isometric contraction against the back of my prosthetic sockets. Okay. I'm kind of pushing them against the socket and then that's providing me the leverage to do the hinge. So it's like sort of a, it like burns in my hamstrings, I think because I'm pressing them against my, my no, socket is, so much. I was looking at your shoulder mobility coming through. Oh yeah. Around the, that's not, not as easily as you did that for sure. <laughs> well, you have bigger muscles than I do. <laughs> so you go pretty, pretty I go smooth. pretty tight, but I want to have some, some space in there. Gotcha. So about, you're saying take a little bit wider yeah, I go a little bit wider just for me, but I've done it all sorts of different. Yes, no, it's it's interesting. And it's even hard for you to not bend your knees at all. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to stay as straight as I possibly can there. But it, it feels different now. The question, the question is, is had you ever seen anybody do this? I just knew about straight leg deadlifts. I just knew that they were. But, a movement that but people nobody, did. Like, I've never are... seen a double above the amputee do it. No, that's, that's amazing. But it's just something that kind of struck me as I was thinking about it, had it in my mind. No, it's... No, it's... I'm, I'm curious what it'll feel like with more weight. Yeah, we'd probably have to hold down the squat rack. <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt like it was moving, moving a little bit more. Were you, were you rowing? Um, and it, we, should probably, we should probably mention that Rob competed in the Paralympics, yeah, right? And, in 2012. And, you know, just happened happened to, to get a bronze medal <laughs> in rowing, right? So, you know, it's it's just just a, one of his many accomplishments. But uh, <laughs> no, that's the, when you started rowing. Were you how much strength training were you doing already, or did you incorporate more as you got into that? I was doing three times a week. Okay. Um, I had my buddy, my buddy uh, Bobby Maximus, wrote me a, a training plan. Uh, was, it was all just about like gaining strength and gaining mass because I was kind of I'd lost like all my muscle mass when I stepped on the IED Okay, and so it's, it took a long time for me to build it all back And so even when oh, I retired yeah. a year and a half afterwards I still had a lot of mass that I needed to gain get back in order to yeah have the strength to Row the boat so is, who, who came up with this method of deadlifting or was it something this is you, just my own invention yeah so you came up with it so yeah he, he didn't write it into the program or anything it was he wrote deadlift into the program but he said you figure out <laughs> well i had already i already knew how to deadlift oh okay, so when okay. i when i actually uh started working with him um he had me come out to jim jones and meet him okay when we met and then um he was like well what can you do and i saw so he all these different creative. things yeah he's he kind of wanted to understand what I was capable of doing, what I wasn't going to be able to do that well. Yeah. And so I showed him my deadlift technique, and he was like, "That's going to be perfect." So I'm That's awesome. So many of those. So you had already come up with this. Yeah, I had already invented this. I invented this in therapy, Innovative but I hadn't really therapy. done a whole lot of it with um, barbells up up to that point. So was Mostly it more dumb? Onto a dumbbell. Dumbbell. Okay. Okay. They didn't really have. They didn't have like really. Uh, they didn't have heavy weight type of stuff in the. Clinic. It was more just like dumbbells and that kind of thing. So you're making it work. This is, yeah, yeah, this is, I love it. I love it, man. It's innovative. Nice. Yeah, and I do like sets of, uh, you know, five sets of one, the same type of, that way. you know, set and rep structures you would usually do. Yeah. Nice. Good work. But I kind of stopped doing it a lot because when I was doing triathlon, um, I was a lot skinnier. Okay. And I would keep I would keep like twinging my back a little bit by doing this. By or? doing like 275 pounds. Okay. Once I got up to like 275, I would start to like feel twinges in my back. So I kind of stopped doing them a lot just because I don't really need to do a super heavy deadlift anymore. Yeah, yeah, and I guess I don't know if like the the hinge might just put like a little bit of too much, or maybe I was just too light to be doing 275 pounds too. I was sure. only like 100. Well, I mean, it's just it's just like like us training, yeah. right? If you're gonna go for a bigger deadlift, a bigger body weight sometimes is needed. Yeah, right. Depending on you know your leverage and and all of that, 
you know, yeah. so, so it's something where your body type very much can change the way that you are doing a movement. And if you get leaner, it may adjust the way that you're doing it. And, and for yeah, you, yeah. I mean, this is a, you know, it's a different, it's different, but I mean, it's, what's cool about this for me is that you're showing yourself and other people that, you know, it would be very, very simple for you to say, Hey, deadlifts are off the table. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to sit here and do a row, but yeah. to modify like this and throw something like this in is, it's pretty cool, man. It's yeah. I mean, cool, a so. lot of the times when something like that happens, you sort of have that knee jerk reaction. Oh, well, it's not going to be possible because of this and that. Yeah. But then you just need to kind of step back and detach a little bit and just be like, well, what can I think of an idea that might work? I love like, it. Let's, let's like leave the door open to the possibility that maybe I could figure it out. And you just start thinking. And I really just sort of, it came to me as a result of something else that was happening. I didn't like sit down there and invent it. Yeah. You know, it's just like my, my physical therapist was holding on to that belt and it just kind of struck me that it might work. Makes sense. So I kind of had it through my own experiences. No, it does. I'm going to, I'm going to bump up here and wait a little bit. Yeah, you should bump it up to Is that hard at all for you? No. Yeah. Not, the thing is, I'm trying, I'm trying to feel the, the straight leg and I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I only really had support there yeah. and I, my feet weren't really doing much, so to speak, right? So I'm trying to feel that as I'm going. Yeah. And I can understand the challenge of trying to be strapped in here, stabilizing, but also then pulling it's different man it's yeah. very very different but you know it's it's easier when you don't have the musculature it's like the only way you can do it but when yeah. you do it when you have you, you know hey you have knees and you have the full leg it's like sure. it's harder to picture being able to do it no it's what it is is awesome i think it's awesome because yeah. you're finding a workaround you're making it happen like you're walking back in the gym and, and not letting any type of excuse hold you back right so yeah. I mean, I'm kind of the, like I said, same thing with this, same thing with a lot of other equipment. I would, my wheels would be turning saying, how am I going to make this work versus finding an excuse why you can't. Yeah. The fact of the matter is I want to deadlift. So mm. if I want to deadlift, I'm going to figure out a way to deadlift. You want to try something else? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I have, a, I have a different idea. If you're ready for this. My question is, is it possible or do you think it would be possible? for you to use this to do a, a, like a hip hinge movement, maybe not go very low. Yeah. Right. But stay in that position possibly. So let me, it's let feasible. me demonstrate what I'm thinking or, and, and you tell me if maybe not. So if you're here holding on from here, I mean, is it possible to hip hinge like this potentially? And maybe not again, like not go, go super low, but almost leave the safeties in here where that's your stopping point, but you're yeah. flexing the glutes to try to drive through. Let's give it a shot. What's going to happen though, is I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to turn into a V. I'm going to go like that. Okay. And you're going to see my foot come up onto the heel. My toe is basically just going to come up off and it'll go up onto the heel. Okay. So that's kind of but will you lose, so let's not take the don't pull these out. Yeah, yeah. So that's your stop that's point. That's the stop. Okay. Yeah. But I'll, and I'll you grab on here. I've never used this before actually. Yeah, so this will pivot around your neck. So if you kinda Oh okay. It'll kinda set right in there. And that's your spot there. So here I'll move forward for more. Then you would come yeah, back. Like that. Yeah. So if we pulled the safeties, well I could Pull the safeties out so you can go a touch lower if you wanted to. Yeah, I can go a touch lower. So you see how my feet come up. Yeah, mm. it's almost like you, you roll back on your heels. But yeah, how exactly. does that feel for you? Yeah, it feels good. I mean, obviously I've never done it before, so it feels hard. But yeah, and does I it give does it, it give you that hand. same type of feeling as a deadlift? A little bit, like a hip hinge, or is it more in your glutes? Um. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a pretty similar feeling. A little bit different though, right? Yeah. Because of your grip and hand position. 
I mean, I can definitely feel it in the hamstrings, like I was with the deadlift, that's okay. for sure. So, you know, if you have a, you know, for example, something is a little bit tweaked or injured, like how do you work around it? So with you, it's, it's just a, obviously a different way to find a workaround. Yeah. To do I think different with this, movements. If I practice it a lot and I kind of started slowly and yeah. you know, kept that safety in, sure. and just gradually brought it down more and more, yeah. I could probably get that down pretty low. I bet I bet you would. Here. Yeah. If I really if I put some time into practicing the, yeah. the motion. Just something different. Something different, man. So this we'll just keep uh working down the line a little bit here. And uh this is a reverse glute ham. Right? So different machine, but when I have used this, uh I've I've had different lower leg issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for example, at, at one point in my career, I had torn my plantar fascia. So my foot was having a lot of trouble. So this was something that I threw in massively at that point because I couldn't put a lot of pressure on my foot uh, to train, right? So this is something I've used as an accessory movement to deadlift and, and different leg training things. But with this, you, the, the um, pad basically goes on the back of your legs and then you extend your legs out. So essentially, you're getting tension through your glutes, hamstrings, a little bit of lower back uh, as you stretch back, and then you extend out from there. So I'm curious, man, I'll, sh I'll show you how it works and, yeah. and see if this is something, you know, again, just training ideas, right? It's just yeah. training ideas. I'm so. gonna change, change modes on my legs too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now that's, that's something that uh, Rob showed me earlier. He literally can control his legs from his phone. So they are Bluetooth, right? Yeah, Bluetooth connected. I'll, I'll, I'll change it when, um, when I get on the machine okay. and I'll show you how to. So he's gonna change modes in his legs, which is, I'm blown away by it, but it's pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> so we'll come here and then push here, but you're basically initiating everything from your lower, uh, lower body from here. So you come up, stretch back, and then just push out from there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of variation you can do, single leg, double leg, yeah, yeah. Um, keep your legs straight, completely straight coming back and then go like that. So, um, a lot of ways to do it, but I'm just curious, man. I'm yeah. curious if you'll enjoy that. I'll do the not. straight leg thing first because that's what mode my legs are in. Okay. Let's see if I can get on this thing. You just, you just had to make a slight adjustment to the belt from me. Like oh, okay. just a little bit, right? Down, yeah. just slightly. Okay. I have a, sl a slightly smaller waist. Just, okay. Is that a, is that a fat joke? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you got a strong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Strong trunk. A strong trunk. That's good. I like that, man. I like that. Okay. I'll take strong trunk. You like that? Okay. And then, um, how do so I it? basically, it's going to come down. So I'm going to lift, help oh, okay. you lift, and then this is going to come out. But I'll hold on. I'll uh, hold on right back here you. as you come back, and then you just talk to me. All so right, here, yeah. you tell me when. All right. And yeah, I can go you're... all the way up, I think. Okay. And then just push down. Push down. Yep. That's you. Yeah. Nice. And so I'm not like pushing out like you were talking about. I'm just yeah. like levering with my... So it would be like what I did at the end there with straight, yeah, yeah. a straight leg, right? And to be honest with you, this is probably the only way I do it because... How heavy does that feel? That's not really all that heavy. Not bad. I mean, yeah, you're doing it. I'm good. just kind of holding on here. But... And then um, even if I put my legs in regular mode the yeah. knees would just dangle and i'd still be doing the same because the because the pressure is being applied there yeah that's awesome man how does like, that feel oh yeah i can definitely do this yeah this would be great that's awesome. Cause one of the i mean because when i walk it's all glute yeah and so it, having good glutes having strong glutes is like very incredibly important because right? they don't have the hamstring yeah the calf or anything to God, help that's so cool man and then that, that hip drive. That's great. Hip drive is important for me as well. You tell me when. I'll do one more. Perfect. But yeah, and then, so yeah, I could like pull out my phone. And then it brings this up. So right now I'm controlling my right leg. And I'm in lock, lock knee mode and I just go into basic mode and then you see it. That's insane. Go down. And I switch over to the left leg. Right now it's in beast mode, so I just go to basic mode. 
And that's, that's it. crazy. So what's something else in, in the weight room, right? So now I've thrown out my fun ideas, right? Like different <laughs> equipment. Like what else did you have to adapt to? Um, or, or um, I mean the raw you... machine. Okay. Um, I had to do a fixed seat. Okay. So we, I mean, we can check out the raw machine. Yeah, let's go check it out um, for sure. These out. So part of the challenge for using the rowing machine with me is um, actually getting my feet, you know, onto the, into the, uh, the foot board because my prosthetics don't, the feet don't really bend. Okay. And so, and then I have a lot of trouble staying in place because you'd be putting your legs on the ground and you'd hold yourself into place. Yeah. And so what I do, so I have to make those really loose. Then actually you can give me a hand. Yeah. Uh, just tighten my um, foot straps in. And so so pretty, that, pretty snug? Yeah, just as tight as you can. Well, not as, maybe not as tight as Brian Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'll, do whatever, I I'll do, do I will do whatever you say. <laughs> so you do that. And then usually what I would do is I would actually get a, a seat that's manufactured for this purpose. Okay. And it's just a flat piece of carbon fiber square and you would clamp it onto this and it would so just it would, it would I would take the seat off yeah replace okay or I don't necessarily take this off I just move it out of the way yeah but and then I would take a boat strap and I would actually strap my legs in okay so hand me the uh thing and so you see how if I was going to try and row like this yeah you would see how it pulls me forward and that's not what you want to do yeah you want to be able to pull backwards so the knee, I can't have the knee bend. So what I would do in this particular case, if I didn't have my fixed seat and my rowing legs, I would just come over here again and I would do my straight leg mode. And that's gonna hold it in place, sort of, like that. So now they won't bend. All right, so now I can kind of and if I, you know, if I immobilize the seat, the seat's still going to roll. But what I would do is just have it be straight. And then you're pulling against yeah. that. And when I was rowing, you really want to maximize your forward leverage. Interesting. And just get as much of it as you can. Yeah. Just like that. So it's just upper back, or I guess trunk and arms is what we called it in the Paralympics. So you're obviously getting a, a, a ton of flexion at your waist. Oh yeah, I, bet, I go over. forward as far as I can. You mean, you want to try and grab as much water as really as you can. Makes sense. You're trying to get your oars back as far as you can get them. Yeah. To a point, you know, you don't want to go, there's diminishing returns. Yeah, so I'm going to stay here. And yeah, all, luckily I can kind of pin that seat against the end, end of this thing. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's uh, that's very, very different. Yeah. Like trying to generate power here so much of the, the pole, for me, I didn't really realize that is with my legs. With, yeah, with I mean, the normal, the like rolling, if I come right? here. Yeah. And hip hinge. Yeah, I'm, so much of the power would be like there versus. Did you ever keep your time? Like for 500 meters or something? Um, let's see. On a, on a concept I two. didn't do a whole lot of concept two training just because we, I was so inexperienced at rowing, we need to maximize our time on the water so I can improve my technique as much as Makes possible. Sense. Um, let's see, the best 2K I ever did was like a 754 or something like that. For 2,000, wow. Uh, and then I think my best 1K I ever did was a, like a 330 something, 338 I think. Wow. But that was pretty early on. I never, I never did uh, another test like closer to when I was in my best shape in the Paralympics. That's but I know there's trunk and arms people that have gone maybe sub seven for a 2K. Wow. I think. 
That's, and then that's, like that's low crazy. three minutes for a, a 1K. Or, yeah, yeah, low three minutes for a 1K. I mean, is that pretty much, because you're in, in the Paralympics, it, it's a, a 1K for the race? It used to be, now it's two. It's two, okay, yeah. okay. And I just did a 2K for fun. Or I was doing just to build up endurance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's it's funny because. Else, so I was, I was working with Maximus and he was writing uh, my gym stuff and I was getting, he was having me do a 2K pretty regularly and I was getting like 8.04, 8.03, you know, 8.05 or whatever. And then he texted me one time, he's like, today when you do your 2K, just go sub 8. And at that point I was like, I didn't even think that I could. Yeah. And then he told me that. He just just go sub 8 today. And I did 7.54. That's amazing. It was like, yeah, just having that that mindset of knowing that you're going to be able to do it, bef- deciding that you can do it before yeah. you start doing the thing. Yeah. It's like, I, I bet it's the same thing with uh, when you're doing a really heavy deadlift. Yeah. If you, there's any doubt in your mind that you're gonna be able to do it, then a lot of the times you're probably not gonna be able to, right? No. no. So you yeah. kinda have to be like, I'm going to lift this. No, yeah, for me when, I would say when I did all my, all my heaviest pulls, I didn't know what my max was. Yeah. So I had no. Is that concept. strategic? But mm-hmm. Not knowing. Mm-hmm. So I yeah, didn't I fail. I didn't fail in training. Yeah. And going into the contest, if especially if I was going to call my weights, I didn't know where my failure point was. Okay. Right. So like in my head, mentally, yes, I may not have lifted the weight in training, but I didn't think that I I didn't have a program ceiling yeah. where I yeah. knew that oh crap, if this weight gets on the bar, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah. It's more approaching and saying this is what is in front of me that's what's going to get lifted yeah so when you get in that mode it's pretty powerful so you know again when you talk about limitations and barriers and whatever a lot of it is more mental which i'm sure that you agree with is like if you tell yourself you're not going to do it or that this is hard or that's hard or this is impossible or not doable or the word can't which i hate yeah comes up i can't do that like it's if you the word those words are coming out of your mouth and you're not going to do it yeah, right? exactly. Because you're you're mentally checked out, you know, and, and that's what I always with myself was like, why can't I do it? I can. can yeah. Right. So if you're walking up and saying I can, I will, I'm going to do this, then you're going to do it, you know, yeah. and you're going to find a way to make it happen and, and execute what's in front of you. So, you know, it's it's nothing, nothing is impossible, right? Like if you think that way, it's such an empowering uh, way to think. Because you're not, nothing is impossible, right? It's like it just hasn't been done yet. Right? Yeah. It's more. It's more so that type of mentality I always tried to have, and and always have tried, right? Even with stuff that I do now, is why why is that not doable? Of course it's doable. It's just maybe somebody hasn't done it yet, but you can yeah. do it. And I think that you're a walking example of that in everything that you've done, right? So you pick the the hardest, the biggest, the you know. And again, guys, if you if you didn't listen to the podcast with Rob, I mean, go we back go, and try we, again. Yeah, we, <laughs> do it again. Do better. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really incredible, like the way that you've approached it, man. And you know, coming in the gym with you here is just it's another example of that. And we only got to do a few things here, but it's yeah. you know, you're you're walking in and and approaching deadlifting or or the rower or some of those other things and saying, hey, I could do that, right? Like, yeah, and a lot of the time, everything that I've done, like when I first started, I didn't know that I could, I didn't know for sure that I could do it. Mm. Like I didn't know for sure that I was gonna be able to get a medal in the Paralympics. I didn't know for sure that I was gonna be able to ride my bike across the country or yeah. ride over Monarch Pass in the winter time. I didn't know for sure I was gonna be able to run the 31 marathons in 31 days. I'd done yeah. five, but you know, how do I know? When I got to 10, I wouldn't just deteriorate. Um, but I always just had that, one little nugget of belief if everything goes according to plan then it is possible it's there's a happen. chance that i could do it absolutely and so as long as you have that when you first start then you just start with that little bit nugget of belief and then as you go like as i ticked off the marathons it's like okay 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 yeah. okay i'm past halfway absolutely oh okay and then i got to the end and then eventually i'm like yeah i'm gonna do it now and then you're the first that's done it. Yeah. The only that's done it. Right. Right. And you're paving the way, man. So yeah. it's, it's, so... it's, you know, just like the, the Rob Jones squat. I mean, so many things are, I mean, you're just, you're, you're just coining that term, man. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the times I'll like try and invent something and it just won't work at all. Yeah. And I'll be like, 
you know, all right, maybe it's not possible. Then I'll just take a step back and say, well, well let's try it again and just sure. see. Let's just keep trying. Make it work. Like the first time I did the deadlift, I kind of fell over and it was like, oh, yeah, it didn't really work that great. And then I just had to take a breath and take a second and just go. Let's give let's it its due it. diligence. Let's try again. Yeah, you have to. You have to try at least a few times. You can't just try it once and then no. To say I can't. It might do be. It, it might know? be just that much further away. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe I just, I, what, what can I change? Yeah. What can be changed, if anything, that, that will make it work? I love it, man. You know what I mean? Appreciate you being here, brother. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, yeah. This Thanks is fan. fun, and, and uh, I think we could go all day with different exercises and oh, yeah. wheels turning. We could go to every day. piece of machine in this. <laughs> and find something to do. And find something, something to do. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. But anyway, if you guys want to check Rob out, it's robjonesjourney.com. Uh, check his website out or any of his social media. Um, hopefully you got something out of this. And no matter what you are going through personally, you can overcome it. You can find a way. Do not use the word can't. Believe it and make it happen. So anyway, appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Hope you're doing amazing for now. Go out and be great. And we'll check you guys later.